Hello everyone, welcome back to the lecture today. So this is part two of Feedback Fundamental. So this series we're just gonna cover uh, some fundamental concept of feedback uh, amplifier before going to the actual configuration of feedback and feedback amplifier circuit. So in this lecture we will basically analyze um, or just examine the two main benefits of um, a feedback amplifier. The first one is gain sensitivity uh, and the second one is bandwidth extension. So in previously just uh, some reminder we go over this basic configuration of our feedback amplifier. The signal is feed fed to from input to output but then the output is fed back to a feedback transfer function. Uh, then it go through a summation node to calculate the error signal in here and fit that to the basic amplifier. So the first topic will be gain sensitivity. Even though the name is gain sensitivity, it's a little bit deceptive in here. So in this section, we actually will see how the closed loop gain is gonna be less sensitive to the change in the open loop gain. So as I mentioned before, your open loop gain or the gain of your basic amplifier can vary uh, due to some individual um, transistor parameter change. Therefore, in order to make your system more robust and make the gain more stable, um, you need to, to make your gain become less sensitive to those uh, fluctuation. So if we knew that the loop gain which is t equal to beta a is very large and we showed that in previous lecture, um, we, 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 we can estimate uh, our closed loop gain af to be one half of beta, right? So basically overall gain of the, of the circuit is a fit is a function of the feedback network only. Now, if we examine the variation in close in closed loop gain uh, AF due to the change in open loop gain A, so if I give you AF as a function of A, okay, now I can basically take the derivative of uh, AF over A and Finally, I can have this is my expression, right? Uh, now, if I multiply this uh, dA up here, I can write the uh, equation like this. So now, if I divide it both sides for AF, I can have um, I can write the equation as uh, like DAF over AF okay I do a bunch of magical arrangement and if you want you can work the math out by yourself but here's the key now at the end I came with another thing another terms called showing DA over A so DAF over AF what does it show? D AF is the variation and AF is the original, right? So this whole term show the variation or the changes in your AF signal. I mean your AF gain, sorry, the closed loop gain. Therefore, this term DA over A would show the variation or the changes um, in your closed loop gain. Now, I will just simplify that term in here. If you if you look at this, now you can actually have one equation that compare the change, the I would say percentage of change, okay, the percentage of change in uh, closed loop gain to the percentage of change in open loop gain, and basically the the comparison term is the AF over A. Now, if you remember in previous lecture, we know that usually closed loop gain is a lot 
smaller than open loop gain. Therefore, this fraction AF over A is very small. Therefore, you know that um, the a change in AF is significantly smaller than a change in A. Therefore, a uh, change in open loop gain A would come from would come from the variation in uh, uh, the individual transistor parameter in the basic amplifier. So if we use feedback, uh, we can actually eliminate this variation. So let's go through one quick example here. So the question is, I'm going to ask you to calculate the percent change or um, uh, DAF over AF okay, of the closed loop gain given the change of, uh, given a change in the open loop gain. Um, so here is some parameter. So I know that the, the open loop gain is 10 to the fifth. And I know that my closed loop gain is 50. I know my beta transfer function is 0.019999. And now some of you may recognize this number because this is the example from the previous lecture part one. And I also assume that the open loop gain will change for 10%, which is quite big. Uh, so since the open loop gain changed for 10%, you can actually calculate the amount of change in uh, the open loop gain, right? Uh, so you can have dA equal to 10% multiplied by A equal to okay, uh, 10 to the fourth. Now we can calculate the closed loop gain change. Uh, so basically, we use previous equation we found uh, is DAF equal DA over 1 plus beta A square. Then we plug off the number that we have in. We can plug this number in here. Plug We have 1, plug beta in here, plug A in here. Okay. Then we can have the final answer is 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so now how can how can we find the percentage percent change of AF? It's very simple, just DAF over AF. So it is 2.5 multiplied by 10 to a negative 3 over 50, and the answer is 0.005%. Now 0.005% change in AF is very very small in comparison to 10% change in A. So this is actually the main advantage of using negative feedback system. Since uh, the change in AF is reduced by a factor of 1 plus beta A. And if we compare, uh, compare to the change uh, of the uh, chain of A's, so this term 1 plus beta A uh, Sometimes you can call it a desensitivity factor, so it reduces the sensitivity, the sensitivity of your gain by one plus beta a. So, good time. So now we move to the second topic of the day, which is the bandwidth extension. As I mentioned before, another benefit of having a feedback amplifier is that you can have a wider bandwidth, but at the end of this topic, topic discussion, you can realize that this comes at a cost. So, if we characterize the basic amplifier uh, frequency response by a single pole, then probably you're gonna have a low pass filter kind of. Okay. So we can write the open loop gain frequency response as so as equal to a naught over one plus s over omega h. So AS is basically the transfer function or the, the open loop gain frequency response. So S is J omega. So the first constant or the first term that we have here is A naught, which is the low frequency gain or sometime in different type circuit, it can be the mid band gain. Uh, and the omega H, which is the corner frequency. Uh, so if I write the frequency response of the closed loop gain, so I can basically based on the previous equation I can have AF equal A over 1 plus beta A now I just put S in everywhere uh, 
I do a bunch of magical arrangement and math, I can finally simplify it like this. Okay, so now let's take a look. Um, let's compare this term and this equation and this equation. This equation show you the frequency response or the transfer function, uh, your open loop gain, and this um, this equation show you the frequency response of the closed loop gain. So both of them would have um, a con a low frequency gain and a corner frequency, right? So for the low frequency gain, uh, in here is a naught, but in here is a naught divided by a factor and that factor is 1 plus beta a naught okay so now you can realize that the mid band gain of the closed loop gain is smaller than which of the open loop gain so this is smaller because you divided a naught for a larger number and that that reduction factor is 1 plus beta a naught so now look at the corner frequency. Uh, you have the original one is omega h, but the new one for the closed loop gain is omega h multiplied by 1 plus beta a naught. So therefore, the corner frequency of the closed loop gain is now larger uh, by a factor of 1 plus beta a naught. Okay, so, but if you're trying to com compare the gain bandwidth product, so if you multiply the gain for the bandwidth uh, together, they actually, the, the result for closed loop gain and open loop gain are actually equal. So if I multiply the gain for closed loop for the corner frequency of closed loop, then I get the same thing for... Um, What's that called? Open loop. So here is the result of that. So basically, if you have your original basic amplifier, and this is the response of the open loop gain, technically, when you design your feedback amplifier, your gain just reduced. Then, but in exchange, you can extend your bandwidth. So there are some plus and minus in there. So let's go through one quick example together. So the question is, let's find the bandwidth of a given feedback amplifier. So you have uh, the mid band gain is 10 to the 4, corner frequency, uh, uh, the open loop circuit is 2 pi, 10, 2, 2 pi multiplied by 100 uh, radian per second. So this is actually 100 hertz, okay? The closed loop gain at low frequency, uh, AF at 0, is 50. So now uh, I can plug in the transfer function for, I can plug 0 in for the transfer function of AF. Then I can have this equation, right? Uh, so if I basically move this term up here, move this term down here, I can calculate 1 plus beta A naught uh, as a naught over AF zero. Some some of you ask me, oh, why don't you find beta? Why do you need to find one plus beta A naught? Because one plus beta A naught is the factor that is gonna change your uh, corner frequency. So now I just plug the number in, and I know that this factor is two hundred. Now, if I want to find the closed loop bandwidth, it would be pretty easy. I would have uh, omega FH, which is the closed loop bandwidth, equal to this one, the open loop bandwidth multiply for by this factor here, 1 plus beta a naught. Then finally, I would have 2 pi multiplied by 20,000 radian, like radian per second. So what do I see in there? Uh, I see that the, with the feedback circuit, uh, I can increase the bandwidth from 100 to 100 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That's a lot. However, it comes as, as the cost. So the cost is that I have to reduce my gain from 10 to the fourth, which is pretty large, down to 50. 
So that's it for today. Uh, we have finished off the fundamental concept of feedback amplifier. So in the next lecture, I will go through one uh, one common configuration of a feedback amplifier, which is the Shuri shunt amplifier. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.